so uh, airtel was the one who actually coined this term Uh, another thing uh, these are just a few terms we need to clear out uh, before we can go further because these words would be uh, used in our uh, coming lecture a uh, collaboration collaboration is very important for teams and collaboration is exactly the reason why teams are actually being made collaboration means working together to solve complex problems now um, the purpose of teams itself is the element of collaboration right uh what is a team team is a unit of two or more people having a shared mission and responsibility towards a single goal right uh, there is nothing complicated in that uh they have a shared mission uh and shared responsibility moving towards a common goal uh then two teams we can uh, we can find two types of different um teams uh, problem solving teams uh, sometimes called task forces and committees uh these two types of teams uh, you will find in any organizational setup on a regular basis yes there might be others as well uh problem solving teams are basically uh, they are assembled for specific issues and then disbanded right this type of team is make made for a specific issue uh, for a temporary period uh, often short periods of time and they are cross functional cross functional means that people from different areas of expertise uh, they mostly come together and work on a problem uh, if you talk about a business so maybe people from uh, there must be people from finance people from marketing uh, people from hr people from operations etc so people from different uh, different department or people of different specialities they come together they work on a specific problem for a short period of time and then the group is disbanded uh, on the other hand we have committees now committees are structured groups they have a bigger life span than uh, the problem solving teams or task forces and most importantly they deal with uh, regular occurring tasks right uh tasks that regularly occur in the organizations uh, so this is why these committees are made and they are for a uh, comparative comparatively for a longer period than problem solving uh, teams or task forces now what are the advantages of teams right why do we make teams uh there are many advantages but um, just to mention a few the first advantage is increased information and knowledge obviously when um, the knowledge of 10 people for example there is a group of 10 people so the knowledge of 10 people would um, in normal cases uh, be much more than knowledge of one person right so an increased information and increased knowledge is available to you when you are working as a team Uh, the second one is increased uh, diversity of views now diversity uh, is very important uh, diversity of views is very important because uh, if we talk about a single person a single person might be able to think in one perspective or or mostly two perspectives or maybe three perspectives but uh, as we have already discussed that uh, every person every uh, every individual uh, perceives a situation or perceives a problem in a different way right uh, sometimes we hear a, uh, a side of a story which we couldn't even possibly imagine uh, for ourselves right so increased diversity of views when there are a lot of people in a team there is a diversity of views and that is a healthy thing for a group to accomplish a task uh, then we have increased acceptance of solution right uh those who participate uh, in making a decision are more likely to support it and then they encourage others to accept it as well right the next we have higher performance levels obviously um, a team when working um, in a synergy when working in the right way uh, is definitely more uh, effective than individual right working in teams can unleash new levels of uh, creativity and energy in workers uh who share a sense of purpose and mutual accountability right uh, effective teams can be better than uh, top performing individuals at uh, solving complex problems why because there is an increased information there is there would be diversity of views right so these are the advantages now alongside the advantages uh talk speaking about teams um, there are disadvantages of teams as well at times right the first one is groupthink Group thing is a situation 
uh, where peer pressure basically causes individual uh, team members to withhold uh, contrary or unpopular opinions right what happens in group think that um, a, a certain person uh, they might have a certain idea which might be going uh, against the norm of the group which might be going against the most popular view of the group so in those cases that individual just withholds that idea or that information with themselves do not share them uh, who knows that idea might be uh, better than all other ideas but due to group thing but due to that group pressure uh, people most uh, often do not share uh, unpopular opinion in the group right uh, the next disadvantage is uh, hidden agendas now this is a very big problem and it uh, occurs a fun uh, occurs uh, occurs often sorry uh, it occurs often um, especially in our region and almost every everywhere uh, there are certain people or um, a group of people inside groups and uh, what they do is that they have some hidden agendas they have some uh, specific other uh, intentions right so when they communicate in group or when they uh, operate in group they actually uh, they they are not working for the um, for the goals of the team they are actually working for certain uh, goals of their own which may actually hurt the actual purpose of the team so it is a disadvantage uh, then we have cost uh, teams are always hard to manage because you have to align the schedules you have to arrange meetings you have to coordinate all the individual parts of a project so these things can uh, they can be costly right uh, then we have overload some companies have um, embraced collaborative work approaches um, to such extent that they are overloading their employees uh, with team assignments and most often what happens that if you perform well in a group the top performers of the group uh, they are actually um, in most cases uh, they are given even uh, bigger workload right uh, because they because the management or whoever is actually making those decisions uh, they are aware of the fact that these certain people they are efficient they work better so as a result uh, they keep getting more and more work uh, which can be problematic of course for those individuals who were previously achieving uh better goals right uh, then we have characteristics of an uh, effective team what are the characteristics which an effective team should have uh these are just few basic ones we will uh, go through th through them quickly uh clear objective the objective of the team must be very clear only then the team can be working effectively if there is a confusion in the objective of the team if people are not uh, clear enough or people are not aware of the fact that what is the the um, objective of this team what are we are trying to achieve here uh, then there would be problems right so the objective should always be clear uh, there should be a shared sense of purpose right all people should be aware and they should be sharing right they should be sharing the sense of purpose they should be aware and they should all be uh involved in it totally right involved in what involved in the purpose they must believe in that purpose right uh the next thing is strong sense of trust strong sense of trust is very important between the group members uh, if there is uh, if trust is not there if there is a trust deficit then it will definitely uh, make the team ineffective openness and honesty uh, all communication they must be honest they must be open uh, decisions by consensus all the decision individual decisions uh, must not be taken uh, whatever decision is being made by the manager of a team uh, or even the team individuals uh, they it must be by consensus right it must be discussed and all members of the team must be agreeing to it uh, then we have uh, think creatively creativity is very important uh, one must find creative solutions out of the box solutions uh, to go by the problems uh, then we have uh, knowing how to resolve conflicts now whenever there are teams there will definitely be conflicts now conflicts does not necessarily means that two people are fighting each other and maybe hitting each other with bats or something uh, difference of opinion is also a form of a conflict right 
maybe there is a difference of opinion over a certain point right so these type of conflicts initially they uh, they are small they do not uh, mean much but uh, they can uh, res- they can result into uh, horrible things for a group so a team must always know how to resolve conflicts and the last one and the most important one i believe is that believe that their work matters whatever they are doing whatever is the objective or purpose of the team the team members must believe that whatever they are doing it matters it is important it is significant it is going to play a role in the society or a business or anything right so these are the characteristics of effective teams if you have these qualities in a team uh, it will most probably be an effective one uh group dynamics group dynamics are the interactions and processes that takes place within a team uh whenever there is a team these four things would always be happening in those teams number 1 assuming team roles number 2 allowing the team to evolve number 3 is to resolve conflicts and number 4 is overcoming resistance now these are the four different dynamics which uh, should be happening in a team right and they often do uh, starting with the first one assuming team roles now there are many uh, roles uh, which people can take on while they are operating in teams uh, broadly categorized in three uh, different uh, pa- uh, strata uh, self oriented roles team maintenance roles and task oriented roles now self oriented roles as the word suggest itself uh, these ro- these roles are actually taken up for some personal objectives for personal advantages for personal goals right but the other two uh, team maintenance roles and task oriented roles they are more team related right so the first type of role self oriented roles they can often be problematic uh, they they can often be uh, a problem for the group or the objectives which the group want to achieve but the other two they are on the good side for the team uh, they are not on the basis of individu- individuality they are for the collective benefit right not for the individual benefit starting with the first one self oriented roles first possible role can be controlling when people start dominating others by exhibiting superiority or some kind of authority and it happens in almost in every group even in your friend circle if you if you look closely uh, there must be one or two people who are actually uh, most of the time controlling a certain group they are dominating others by exhibit, uh, exhibiting some kind of uh, superiority right then there is another role it is called withdrawing uh, retiring from the team either by becoming silent or by refusing to deal uh, with a particular aspect of a team's work sometimes what happens that uh, something is going on in a team and there is some person who just uh, becomes totally silent or uninterested and does not participate uh participate in the team activities or maybe they refuse to a certain part of the work which they do not want to do now talking of the team spirit uh all type of work must be done if you want the team to uh achieve success whether you like that part or not but you need to do it uh, a simple example i'll give you uh, normally uh, when we play cricket with friends uh, we love to bowl we love to bat but we never like to field especially in summers in an open sun it is a difficult job but we still do that right uh, because this is a team spirit we do not like fielding we do not like running towards the ball uh, or maybe standing in the sun for a very long time but we need to do it that is the team spirit so maybe if a person just denies it and he um, he or she um, uh, denies to do that job for example she wants to bat she he or she wants to ball but uh, she won't uh, or she or he won't uh, want to field then we would say that withdrawing is actually happening here attention seeking it is also very common behavior in groups which we find uh, even in your class uh, there there must be uh, some controlling people some withdrawing and some attention seekers uh, what are attention seekers they call attention to oneself right uh, and demanding recognition from others 
they just somehow want to be in the spotlight they just somehow want to be topic of the discussion right so attention seekers are also uh, at 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 times they are problem creators uh, then there is diverting role uh, focusing the team's discussion of topics of interest to the individual right uh, rather than those of relevant to the task uh, mostly in simple words what they mean that they just divert the focus of the team from the actual goal to towards something of their own maybe some topic of their own or maybe uh, to their to their to to one self right so uh, these are the four self oriented roles then we have team maintenance roles we have encouraging here we all know what encouragement means drawing out other members by showing verbal or non verbal support or appreciation right uh, we have harmonizing uh, harmony harmony means that uh, the differences among the team members they must be eradicated uh through through any means maybe through mediation between them or maybe using some uh, humor to relieve tension of a certain situation uh, then we have compromising role uh compromising means offering to yield on a point in the interest of reaching mutually acceptable decision most of the time what happens that a certain person may not be agree agreeing with a certain point uh but due to uh but for the collective benefit or for uh, uh, collective good uh, they just let go their own original point and try to agree with what uh, others are already agreeing with then we have task oriented roles initiating it is very important getting the team started right there always has to be someone who has to get the team started right uh, information giving or seeking uh, this is also a role a positive role um Uh, offering or seeking information relevant to questions facing the team right whatever task is at hand uh, for the team uh, the attention seekers or attention givers they seek or offer information related to that then we have coordinating showing relationships among ideas uh, clarifying issues and summarizing what the team has actually done so basically all the coordinate coordination job uh procedure setting suggesting decision making procedures that would move the team towards the goal so these are the um, possible roles which a team member can take when working in a team uh, the second thing was allowing team for evolution now evolution is very important uh the, you can see a process five step process uh, this is how teams are made and this is how teams evolve right uh, evolution means that uh, teams should not be static they should be dynamic they should be changing from time to time according to the needs of the situation right uh, you can never be static so for that purpose maybe we need some new members in the team or maybe we need just um, a little overhauling of the existing members of the team right so it starts with orientation this is when the team members they meet they socialize uh they get to know each other and establish their roles that is the first point in the second point conflict arises obviously when people are meeting people are socializing they are exchanging ideas they are establishing roles so a difference of opinion and perspective will definitely emerge because everyone do not think in the same way right so conflict will emerge there will be a difference of opinion uh then in the third point brainstorming happens team members they explore their options they evaluate their alternatives they discuss things they think about possibilities right so after brainstorming the fourth step is emergence the team reaches to a consensus on a chosen decision conflict arose in second point brainstorming happened in the third point and that conflict actually was then ultimately restored in emergence the fourth point uh, that where the team reaches to a consensus on a chosen decision and number 5 is reinforcement uh, the team reestablishes harmony and makes plans to put the decision into action so this is how uh, teams actually evolve and this is also how teams are actually being made right uh, the next is resolving conflict is very important uh, conflict can be destructive but conflict can be constructive as well 
uh, as we talked about difference of opinion or things like that they 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 can play a constructive role at time uh, and conflicts can be based on many reason right uh, conflicts can be uh, based on uh, maybe difference of opinion right uh, conflicts can be there can be many uh, conflicts can be like uh, maybe disagreement over some goals or responsibilities uh, maybe a competition for some resources maybe due to communication uh, maybe due to the personality or attitudes of some people or values or cultural differences it can be anything right so in order to resolve the conflicts the teams need to be proactive first point right uh, deal with minor conflict before it becomes big right before they become major conflicts and they create problems you should always be communicating the group should always be very open in communication because communication is very important uh, in resolving conflicts uh, openness everything should be out in the open whatever you are feeling your feelings should be out in the open before you actually try to deal with the problems uh, research facts and figures numbers we should have them properly before trying to look for a solution uh flexibility means don't let anyone lock into a position uh before considering other solutions right so you should always be flexible uh fair play fair play means that um you should always look for fair solutions right which are fair for both the parties uh none of the uh, concerned parties must be Uh, treated unfairly uh then we have alliance uh, get opponents uh, to fight together uh, against an outside force right yes there must be problems within a team there often are uh, small little problems but when the team is up against another team or maybe someone from the outside then the original team members uh, they must act together as a team right so this was about resource uh, sorry this was about resolving conflict uh, then we have om- overcoming the resistance uh resistance is natural uh and resistance happens right there are lot of resistances when you are in a group or in your team um some people might be resisting to do a certain job which is allocating to them right which is allocated to them so whenever you encounter resistance or some kind of hostility uh, you should try to maintain your composure and uh, address the other person's emotional needs right uh, mostly uh, resistance or hostility or these type of problems uh, they are uh, they are mostly emotional most of the times they are emotion and when someone react at that time mostly they are emotional so first of all you need to stay calm uh first of all you need to address the emotional needs of that person right if he's angry if he's desperate so what is the reason behind it you should try to uh, settle that uh active listening plays a very important role in it uh listening whenever you are in a group or maybe you are managing a group you should always be a very active listener active listening means that you should listen and also understand what the other person is saying try to understand it with empathy right uh then open line of communication uh, communication must always be open there must be no barriers uh between communication and the last one is collaborative effort right um uh, collaboratively as a team uh everyone should make an effort uh, so that resistance can resistance can be countered right so that was it for today uh inshallah in the next lecture we would be talking about communication in the teams but today we just had to clear up uh, a few things about teams uh that was it for today uh hoping for a good uh question answer session in our live class a uh, quote of the day is in front of you uh read it and implement it in your lives have a good day allah hafiz